So the room is for informational educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. Future stocks and spot currency trading have large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. I presume that you can read and you can read the rest of it if you are interested in it. Basically, um, don't trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Can everyone else hear me okay? Okay. Let me see if I can turn it up. Is that better? Okay. I have my microphone too low. So, okay. Now, I'm going to be using Ninja Trader for the presentation today. And um, also, the market report that came out at 8.30 is unemployment claims. It typically will move the currencies more than it moves anything. Well, gold and currencies. Um, it really has a large impact on those. Um, now, all of my trades, every trade that I take is at an ATR or at a congestion dot. The gray dots are my congestion dots, okay? So I have just marked the trades that have come in this morning that had volume divergence. You'll see I have a red line, a yellow line, and a green line, okay? This is very, very simplistic, okay? We are close to an ATR. We had diverging volume. The entry is on the close, which is the yellow line, okay? I come underneath the ATR, which is the plus sign, and I set my stop. Then I double that as my profit target. Any questions on that? It's really pretty simplistic. The hard part is learning how to read the volume, okay? But again, you know, if you are at a level of support or resistance, which I measure by using either the ATR or the congestion dot, then all you have to do is look at the volume. Is the volume decreasing? That is the most simplistic view that I can actually tell you, okay? then you will double whatever your risk is, and that would be your profit target or your first profit target, okay? So on the Aussie, and I did this one in the simulator so y'all could see it, there was an entry. I did not take the profit target because I am not in the market during a major market report. Unemployment claims is a major market report. So on this one, I exited. It was a little bit less than a one to two risk to reward ratio. I would already be out of the Canadian for the same reason. Okay, did you get exactly a one to two risk to reward ratio? No, you did not. But you protected yourself from any major losses if it was an adverse market report. Do you understand that? On crude, you made your profit target. On the British pound, made your profit target. Um, on the euro, you made your profit target. If you notice, we had this line of yellow dots. We did not have volume divergence here. As it came back and tested it, it gave us volume divergence. You made double what your risk was. Over on the Swiss franc, same thing. You entered here off of volume divergence, and you took profits here. Any questions on that? Everybody understand that? To me, that's very, very simplistic. Okay, it's about as simple as you can get.
Now, I've got another screen over here that has the volume on it. So if you're wondering how I'm reading the volume, this is how I'm reading the volume. Do you see how this bar right here is gray? That tells me I am close enough to the ATR to take a trade, okay? On gold, on a standard three-minute chart, I can use up to 20 ticks of risk. So in this scenario, I'm on a 45-minute chart. And on a 45-minute chart, entry was at 1160. You have to offset this. So I would say 58.5. Okay, and I think you have doubled your profit target. Understand? Any questions? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> Now, how do you know when price is at an ATR or a congestion dot? There's two ways. First way is using a market analyzer. In this case, I've got one on a three minute. I've got one on a 180 minute. You can do any time frame you want. It doesn't really matter, okay? Do you see how it tells me it's close to an ATR, close to an ATR? It also tells me if it's in congestion. It tells me exactly how many ticks I am from the ATR. Right now, I know crude, just because I'm looking at this value, that this is flipping the ATR on crude right now, okay? I can tell that just by looking at this, okay? Over on the three minute, you have uh, the Aussie is close to an ATR. And the British pound is close to a congestion dot. That's one way. And we also have this where you can get an email alert. If you're monitoring, for example, the 180 minute chart, you can have an email sent to you saying, hey, this is close to an ATR or this is close to a congestion dot. In addition to that, we also have congestion zone lines that identify the support and resistance from higher time frames. okay? So let's look at gold for a moment. You see I've got a green line, I've got a gold line, and I have a red line. Green lines are, tells me that this is a support and resistance on a 180 minute chart. The Gold line tells me this is a support and resistance zone on a 720 minute chart. The red line tells me this is a support and resistance area on a 1440. So now looking at this 45 minute chart, and I'm using 45 minute predominantly right now because we are trading summertime. Summertime is extremely slow. Okay, when it's a slow market, I increase my time frames. In fact, if you pull up, uh, and I'll do it on this one, on the Aussie, you'll see that the Aussie has a lot of gaps on it. If I go down to a three minute chart, so give me a minute here. Taking longer than I thought it would. Good morning, Christian. All right, that's your 45. If we go and notice on the 45, you don't see any gaps. You know, where the previous bar closed is where the next bar opens. That's what you anticipate, okay? Now, watch when I go down to a three minute. Now, on the three minute, do you see these gaps in here? And I guess I'll blow it up for you. Oh, wrong one. All right, do you see how the it's got gaps? 
anytime I start seeing gaps, I know do not trade that time frame. Do you see how this closed down here, but it opened up here? That is a gap. The congestion is this set of gray lines, uh, gray dots here. Do you see that, viewer eight? That is a congestion dot. The ATR, on the other hand, is the plus sign that is either above or below price. Now, you also see that I have some that are gold color. That tells me price is close enough to take a trade. Now this looks pretty far and I know that on a three minute because I had it set up for a 45 minute viewer eight. But do you see how you have this line of orange, dot, uh, orange plus signs? That just tells me I am close enough to take a trade on a price bar, okay? Does that clarify it for you, viewer eight? Now, summertime, especially, you know, the the month that we are in right now, it's July, August, September. That is the quarter that is slowest in a trading year, okay? So you have, if you're typically a three-minute trader, you need to bump up your time frame to a 12-minute. I like using a 45 minute. It just takes a lot of noise out of the market, which is why I use it. So let's set this back to a 45 minute chart. If you notice on the NASDAQ, you have a red line. That tells me on the 45 minute NASDAQ, it is going into an area of resistance on a for, uh, on a daily time frame. Does everybody understand that? Any questions on that? Why do I care if it's going into support and resistance? I care because that is where I read the volume. Okay, that's where volume is critical. Okay, because you want to see, okay, are the buyers stepping in? Are they going to break this area or are they decreasing? If they're decreasing, chances are they're not going to break that area. Okay, and that gives you a potential to go short. In this case, it would be back to the ATR because on our ADX indicator, we have magenta histogram bars. Anytime we have magenta histogram bars and we get a magenta peak, which looks like this right here, it's got either a magenta dot or a yellow dot. If it's a subsequent peak, it tells us that it is going back to the ATR. Notice over here, initially it was flat and then it started coming down, went to the ATR. Here we get one, it comes down to the ATR. This is typical price behavior. We see it over here in the British pound, magenta peak up to the ATR. Magenta peak down to the ATR. Magenta peak down to the ATR. This is how we can actually predict where price is more than likely to go. Does everybody understand that? And that kind of gives us a heads up. Everybody understand that? That depends on the volume, viewer eight, when it reaches the average true range stop. If the volume tells us that, for example, 
well, this is a great example. Volume said that sellers were actually decreasing. In other words, sellers were not going to take it lower. That gives you a very low risk entry because it will go back up and take out the previous high normally. Okay, nothing is a guarantee, but normally that is what happens. Um, let's see, that was on the Canadian. Let me bring up the Canadian. Now, I do use a multiple time frame uh, approach. It's, you know, I'm not going to get into it in a one hour trading room. But in this case, and this is exactly what I'm looking for, okay? Price made new lows, correct? Volume should have made new lows, just like it did right here, okay? But it didn't. Instead, not only was there a decrease in sellers, but the most important aspect on that bar was the fact that this little delta, which actually shows us who controlled the bar, do you see that? Buyers came in and controlled that bar. So not only did the limit orders decrease, but the delta stepped in and buyers took control. Those are the, uh, The trades that were generated this morning, Christian, the dark red is your stop. The yellow line is where your entry was. The green line is your profit targets. Now, because the volume told us that more likely than not, sellers are not going to take this market down, my anticipation would have been at least a test of that area, which is uh, about 77, 78, 73. Okay. Everybody understand that now? Delta would be market orders, viewer eight. You have limit orders and market orders, okay? Limit orders are typically your retail traders during the U.S. session. Market orders are typically the market makers. Now, during London session, you will find that the limit orders uh, are used by market makers. I've just, it's something I've noticed with the London session. I've also noticed it with the Asian session. U.S. session, it's, you know, the market orders are generally uh, generated by the market makers, okay? Oops. Now, and I'm going to do the uh, 180 because it's just too slow to trade a three minute. There are several columns in a market analyzer, and we have this for multi-chart scanner and also trade station radar screen. The first column is the previous bar trend color. The next one is the current trend bar in uh, color. Then we have ticks from the ATR. If it's blue, that tells me the ATR, which is the plus sign, is below price. If it is red, that tells me that the ATR is above price, okay? So right now, the Aussie is 69 ticks from the ATR on the 180-minute chart, okay? The ATR is below price because it is blue. I also know that it is in congestion. On the British pound, the previous bar was red, the current bar is red, the ATR is above, and it's 44 ticks away from price, okay? 
on the Canadian, you, we did have a red trend bar. It is now turning blue, and it is 48 ticks away from the ATR. In other words, this is going to try and flip that ATR. That's why it says close to ATR. The new ATR has not yet plotted, and I know that. When you see two gray bars, that tells you both of the current and the previous bars are close enough to actually take a trade on that particular market. So in this case, you're 16 ticks away from the ATR on the Euro 180 minute chart. That is close enough to take a trade. Does everybody understand that? So there is a lot of information within this one screen, okay? Oh, it's not a problem. That's why I do the free trading room, Dan. Just ask away, okay? Uh, that's the purpose of it, so you can come in here, ask any questions you want, uh, answer pretty much anything you ask. Okay. Now, let's go, I want to look at the NASDAQ real quick. Okay, in this case, on the NASDAQ, okay, you want to, that was 43.99, this is 43.99 basically, and you can see right now there's no buying coming in here, okay? The sellers actually stepped in on this bar because you can see that the delta slipped to below zero. This is typically when you're going to get a retracement back to the ATR. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. All right, so as it stands right now, I would expect because of this volume bar right here, I would expect to see a retracement back to this ATR, okay? This is telling me not to enter in a long position. I can't enter a long position right there anyway, okay? I'm not at an ATR. Could it come up here and tag this red line? Typically, that's exactly what it will do. It will, and what I mean by tag, it will go up there and it will touch that red line, okay? It's going to generate a magenta peak after that. Now, I know that this bar does not end until 9 o'clock this morning. So there's absolutely no way that you could enter a trade at this moment. Now, if you want to be a real conservative trader, you would go down to a three-minute chart. It will flip the ATR. It will go back and test the ATR, and you'll get an entry. But what did I say earlier today? We are in the slowest month of trading, are we not? I wouldn't be using a three-minute chart, so that means more likely than not, I would not be trading that magenta peak. October, I'll nail them all day long. July, not going to try to nail them, okay? You're going to have gaps. You're going to have a lot of noise because the market is slower, okay? 
Any questions on that? And please, if you have a question, ask it, because this is pretty simplistic to me now. And if you don't ask a question, I just anticipate that you understand exactly what I'm saying. That's right, Kirsten. You can't trade noise. You're going to get stopped out. Why would you trade it? You're going to get caught in a lot of noise right now because you have gaps on the three minute. Understand? The three minute, when you see a gap on a three minute, or I've even seen it on 12 minutes uh, in the last couple of weeks, that chart's really screaming at you, don't trade me because I'm going to take your money. The problem is, are you listening? And believe me, a gap stands out at me. This is different from a gap on Sunday night that's worth 200 pips or 200 points, okay? If I see a 200 pip or a point or tick, whatever market you're trading, if I see a 200 tick gap, I'm going to trade that sucker, okay? That's why I use the gap indicator in multi-charts. It tells me how much the gap was. The last two weeks, we've had substantial gaps. Sunday night market opens, bam, you got this huge gap. It's tradable because the markets don't like gaps, right? All right, let's go back to the Aussie. The Aussie is a good one to use to explain this because it has substantial gaps on it. Uh, let's go down to three minutes. All right. This is just a great example of a gap. Price closed here. Price opened here. This in between here, that's the gap. It gapped from 74.28 to 74.31. That is a gap. You should not have gaps on a three minute chart. And they're everywhere on this chart. Okay? I mean, just absolutely everywhere. Okay? Market closed here. The next price bar opened here. Okay? This is not typical price movement. Okay? You should not see that on a chart that you are trading unless it is like a Sunday afternoon, the market's just opened. You have gaps, okay? Sometimes they're tradable. If they're big, they're tradable. If they're small, you know, 10 tick gap, not tradable, okay? Why is it not tradable? You have to be able to double your risk for a profit target, okay? Now, that's what I did on every one of these, okay? And I'm just going back over it. The yellow line, entry. Green line, profit target. Red line, stop. Okay? The only exception to that was I exited the Aussie early because we had an 830 market report. The Canadian, I would have exited it early because we had a market report that generally will move currencies. Okay, 
So I'm not going to be in the market doing the unemployment report. Everybody understand that? Unless it comes out with something strange, doesn't really move the indices that much. Does everybody understand? Yeah, especially with a win in trade, why are you going to expose yourself to a potential loss? Uh, that one made something like 30, 30 ticks. You got a little bit better than one to one, not quite one to two. But my objective on that trade with a market report coming out, lock in profits, okay? Any questions so far? Please, if you don't understand, ask. If there's something on the chart that you don't understand, ask. You know, uh, on crude, we don't have anything as far as support and resistance until we get up to 56, okay? Actually, it starts coming in about 55.50 on up to about 56. That's where you have the resistance on crude on gold we have uh we do have resistance up above us you know around the 1168 69 area and then and this is from a 720 and a 180 okay the daily is up at 1176 okay on the dow we have a lot of 180s you know, and these are the congestion dots on the 180-minute chart. I've loaded 90 days back. So what I would anticipate, it will at least go up here and touch the green line, and then we're probably going to get a magenta peak. On the Dow, I'm expecting it to touch the red line and then get a magenta peak, and it will retrace, and then it would give me an entry. On the ES, which I think is the worst market to trade, personally um i would expect it to go up to the green lines i lost my mouse there it is um i would expect it to go to the green line and then we could potentially get a magenta peak um and that's just reading a 45 minute not looking at higher time frame okay um on the aussie right now let me go back and see if we had divergence as that went back. We do have, um, on the higher time frames, I know we have uh, conditions for the Aussie to go up. It's oversold. I couldn't think of the word there for a moment. So I think the Aussie will go up, but it's going to have to break through both the 45 minute in this 180 line here if it breaks through this green line i would expect it to come back and test it and then i'm going to go into this uh again i've already been into it a couple of times let's see Okay, this is the Aussie right now. You did increase in volume here. Here you had a slight decrease, but they didn't control it on the seller side. Okay, so this may bounce down a little bit and then go back up. Right, it's the magenta peak on the Aussie, and that's what I've been trading. And sometimes you'll get a couple of trades off of that one.
uh, let's go look at the British pound because the British pound has come back and tested that same area. Yeah, I entered um, last night right before that Aussie uh, unemployment, Dave, and I traded it last night, and then I actually traded it in my live account this morning, too. I mimicked the trade over here. That's the reason I had a little bit difference between where the entry was and where my actual entry was. Okay, this one, the British pound did not give you a secondary entry using standard volume divergence, so I'm not going to point that one out. Uh, that's really the only other one we have. In my live account, no. I actually, in my live account, I entered at the close of this one, Dave. But by the time I got into Ninja Trader, it was here. This is a simulated trade. On the higher time frame, Stan. Viewer 8, on the volume bar, if it's longer on the bottom, it means sellers in control. If taller on top, buyers in control. No, you're looking at the hash mark. And the uh, on the volume, what you have is a zero line right here, okay? Anything above zero is buyers. Anything below zero is sellers, okay? So, for example, and it's easier for me just to mark this on the actual chart. So, in this case, you have higher highs, you have lower highs, okay? That is volume divergence, okay? In this one, you have lower lows and you have divergence here because this one actually should have taken out this one. It should have exceeded this one on the seller side. And you have a bar that indicates buyers started stepping in on that bar. Now, I am only interested if that pattern occurs at an ATR. So I know don't take this one. Instead, take this one. This is the one that matters to me because now you have an area of support and you have a decrease in sellers. If I can draw the line, okay? That's what I want to see because it is at an area of support and you have volume divergence. Christian, I'm trading magenta peaks from the higher time frames. I'm not trading magenta peaks from a 45 minute. Now, what is a blue volume bar? It tells me prices made a high. I'm not trading 45-minute magenta peaks, Christian. It has to be higher than a 45-minute because I cannot go down to a three-minute chart. It's gappy, okay? All right, what are the colors of the volume indicator, okay? 
A blue volume in the, uh, volume bar tells me price has made a high. A red volume bar tells me price has made a low. A gray volume bar tells me it is an inside bar. If it is a magenta volume bar, it tells me that price is an outside bar. All of these are when compared to the previous bar. So at a glance, I can tell you whether price has made a high, a low, inside or outside bar. Everybody understand that now? No, lower low. Red would be lower low. Let's see. Not necessarily. A wider range does not necessarily mean it's going to be more volume. Give me just a minute. I'm setting up a chart for y'all. Yeah, that's what I'm fixing to do. Oh, I'm not going to do that. All right. And we're actually going to start over here. This is a high when compared to this bar. This one, sellers actually stepped in and took control even though it was a low. So if... And notice I, I'm not even looking at price bars. I've minimized it as much as possible. So here was your volume divergence. That told me this had to make a high because you it got to test for buyers. Right now, sellers are stepping in on that bar, and I can see that. This is a one-minute chart. Okay? So now we just made a high. We tested for buyers, and sellers actually stepped in. So I'm going to mark this as a high. And this is a low, this is a low, this is a low, okay? 
Now we just made a low, which means we took out the low of this bar, okay? And I know that because it's red. I also know that sellers are stepping into this bar right now. Why? Because that little hash mark is showing you that the sellers are controlling that bar. Okay? Now, this is a one-minute chart, okay? And again, seller stepped in. So far, this is an inside bar right there, okay? This would be an inside bar. That means that it is encompassed within the high and the low of this price bar, okay? Buyers are controlling the inside bar, okay? Just looking at this, I would want to see if this low right here was lower than any of these three. Because if it was lower than this one or lower than this one, that would give me divergence and I could anticipate a new high. Everybody understand that so far? I don't need to look at the price bars to know that. It's in the volume. Just like this one. I know that's volume divergence. Okay? I know that was two highs. Okay? The volume bars told me that. You had divergence here. You had divergence here. Buyers are coming in now. They've actually exceeded the high of this bar. So this was an inside bar. Now we're making a high. And buyers are actually controlling the high. Yeah, if you don't learn the colors, you will not be able to fully understand this volume indicator. And see on this one, if you were watching that one like we were, you saw as that high was made, sellers stepped in and took it right back down. It's the most powerful thing you will ever put on your chart. Now, price just took out the low of this price bar. I know that. I know that because that volume bar is red, okay? It just took out the low of the previous bar. Sellers definitely controlled that. Now we have an inside bar. If this turns red, it just took out the low of this price bar. Still an inside bar. It's a pause bar. That's what inside bars do. They pause. Okay? Inside bar. They pause. That's all they did. Didn't make a high, didn't make a low. They paused.
Now they're making a high, but look, they're selling the high. Do you see that? Why do I say they're selling the high? Look at the delta. Look at the gray hash mark, okay? Right here. Do you see that? They sold the high. I'm expecting a low. If it turns magenta, that tells you it made both a high and a low. Now it made a higher high. Buyers came in. Inside bar doesn't tell you nothing. Still an inside bar. Still an inside bar, pause bar. Now it's taken and made a higher high when compared to this bar. Highs are having trouble. It's an inside bar. making another high, meaning it's higher than this bar right here. There's potential divergence. Potential divergence didn't work out which is why we wait on confirmed divergence. Sellers are stepping into the bar because the hash mark's going below zero. If that continues, they'll make a low.
nope, buyers are winning, nope, sellers are winning. Ugh, it's a fight, man. This is a one-minute chart, okay? And you can still see this. Do you see the fight? <laughs> All right, sellers won on that bar. Limit orders increased, but the market orders stepped in and took control of that bar. This is when I'm saying they're going to make a low. There's your low. Now, in order to compare it to this high over here, okay, you would have to look at price bars because you would have to make sure this high is higher than this price bars over here. If it was, then you would have volume divergence within that trend, okay? And same thing on the lows. If this low was lower than this low over here, then you would have divergence, but it would need to be lower. Depends on the price bar, Kristen. Your price bar has to confirm it. Go back and watch the video I did on uh, price bars and volume. Can everybody still hear me? Okay. <clears throat> it depends on the price bar. Christian, go back and watch the volume webinar in the annual member section because it tells you buyers stepped in on that low. We should get a new high. There it is. Now, this is a one-minute chart, okay? A one-minute chart, you can't trade that. Take that same concept, put it on a 45, 180, 720, or 1440. Same concept. You can predict the next bar. Does everybody understand that? Now, at the seminar in September, guys, <laughs> I will actually show you how to incorporate the volume in your exit strategies. It's pretty cool, too. That's an outside bar right there. They made both a high and a low. And sellers are dominating that bar. Why? The hash mark is below zero. And when you incorporate this, with the support and resistance that we do, you have got a killer trading strategy. All you have to do is bring your discipline and your risk to reward. Again, I always do a minimum of one to two risk to reward ratio because that way I can be a mediocre trader and still make money. It does not require perfection. Does everybody understand that now? You just had volume divergence right here on limit orders. You should actually more than likely see a high, okay? That's what I would be anticipating. All right. Now, remember we were talking earlier. We were talking about the NASDAQ. And I said it will at least go to this red line. This would at least go to the green line, the green line, 
okay? Do you see that's where they're heading? Most of the time you can enter these trades before the 930 market opening, okay? A lot of times you can because we can actually see with support and resistance where price is going. You know, this is why I can do the market overviews and really pretty much be accurate, okay? And my accuracy rate on a market overview is pretty high. Just go and watch the videos, okay? Any questions today, guys? I did record it, and I'll put it up on YouTube in the blog. Um, yesterday, I also bought a version of the silver package back. So we have the silver package, which does not come with the annual membership or the congestion zones, but it allows you to come in for a lower cost and has the ADX, the trend, ATR in the volume indicator in it. We also have the diamond package. There's four packages that are available with the seminar, okay? And the seminar is in September, I think it's September 27th and 28th. It will be here in Greensboro. We're going to do it at the Hampton Inn. See how you just made the high? We knew that on this bar. Uh, yes, I am going to upgrade to Windows 10. I've signed up for the, they're doing a free upgrade if you have Windows 7 or Windows 8. So the moment it comes out, I'm upgrading. It's supposed to utilize memory better. See how they're selling the high on the one minute? It, when you get those bars and you get them on a higher time frame, it's ecstasy. At least if you love trading as much as I do, it is. <laughs> and there's your low. Okay. All right, guys. That's it for today. I will be back Monday for the annual members. We'll have it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful day. I'll post this later today so you can review it. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always email me. They're buying that low. Um, you can always email me. I'll be happy to respond. All right. Everybody have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend.